everybody. Welcome to the Geek Pit Live, coming to you from EMC World 2016. I'm your special guest host, Scott Delandy, and I'm joined here by my good friend, uh, Melissa Gurney, and we're going to kick off the Geek Pit at EMC World 2016 with our first live demo. Yes, we're going to show SRDF Metro. SRDF Metro, awesome. Okay, so what are we, what are we looking at right here? So right now we've got two VMAX all flash arrays and a third VMAX that will act as the witness. No SRDF currently set up. So basically this is just Unisphere that we have running and we've got a couple of systems and we're actually connected to live systems. Uh, one of them at Corporate in Hopkinton and the other one being uh, in Cambridge and then we've got a third machine uh, out in New York. Absolutely. Okay, and what are we gonna do? So we're running production in Hopkinton, so we're gonna bounce over to the data protection screen. Okay. And get that data protected. Okay, which is good because these are probably mission critical applications. We are, probably have real important things that are running here, so we need to make sure that that data is protected. Absolutely, you don't spend the money and effort on a stretch cluster for, for any old just, application. Just for the fun of it, right? That's something that you know, is not a trivial exercise. Exactly. Okay, all right, so we're gonna set up SRDF Metro. Yeah. Okay. So here's my storage group. That's Got it selected. All right, so that's the storage group. Now, one of the things that's new is that in the past, right, talk about a little bit about Metro. So we've had SRDF, and that's been kind of the gold standard that's been available for literally a couple of decades now uh, for doing remote replication. And what's new is this ability to do Metro. So what is Metro, and what does that actually do? It's, it's a stretch cluster, so it makes your application highly available across multiple sites okay. that are synchronous systems. Okay, so it basically that means that you've got two sites that can be accessible from a host, so if one of them becomes unavailable for whatever reason, the application doesn't care, the users don't know, everything becomes really transparent. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set that up. Yeah, yeah. I bet just... that's really hard. It's super easy, it's Scott. Super easy. So easy you could do it. Okay, do well, you no, no, no. <laughs> All right. I'm not going near that. So we go to protect. All right. We go to and then protect. we have options. So we have Snap VX, regular old fashioned remote replication. Right. Our high availability SRDF Metro Plus, okay. which is what we're going to choose. And then an option to back up with protect point. Okay. That's using data domain. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we've got it all filled out here. Okay. Our remote symmetrics is in Cambridge. We're going to create our SRDF group automatically. Right. Why would you do it any other way? Exactly. Okay. Establish the pairs, set up a witness relationship with New York, and what the witness does is it prevents that split brain in the cluster. A split brain? Yeah. That sounds painful. <laughs> it is painful. Okay. Well, then we don't want it. We don't want any split brains. Yeah. So anytime the hosts lose communication with each other, they act in the split brain scenario independently and can serve I/O from either side. We don't want that to happen. We want the application to be able to process a link from one we, side or the other the, and the keep app, our data in The app needs to know what's the gold copy and what's the one that it continues to access and update. Right, 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 right. Okay. So that's what the witness does. And then we have a remote storage group name. So we're actually going to create the target storage on the remote side automatically. Okay. Service level is diamond because it's an all flash. All that's flash, all that's it, 2016, the year of all flash. Indeed. So we click next. Okay. Maybe. Oh. There we go. Okay. And we have a summary screen. Check it out real quick. We've got a Metro RDF Everything group. Everything looks good. Remote symmetrics, yep. all that jazz. And now we're going to? Run the job. We're going to run the job. Okay. Absolutely. And wait a minute, is it done? It's already done. So that's done. Yeah. Right. What did that take? That took like two or three seconds. Yeah. And in just you know going through the setup and just clicking the default options, I mean you're you're looking easily you know 30 seconds, maybe a minute to go ahead and set that up. I know that you know you spent 10 years in the field, right? You were on the delivery side for most of that time, so you know one of your core areas of expertise has been in you know setting these things up for some of our larger users um, that are out there. So what we just did right there, how is that different than what we may have had to do a couple of years ago? Oh, it used to take hours. So hours. we'd have to create all the storage ourselves, make sure it matched, disable the devices, create the RDF group separately, do all of the things to get the pair established. Right. And then at the end, we didn't even have Metro availability. So. And, and you had to do that manually. So yeah. what would happen if you did something wrong? You were in trouble. Okay, bad things. <laughs> Very bad things. Okay, all right. So good. <laughs> Depending so this, on what you did wrong. <laughs> so so way easier to use, fully automated. So that makes it way less error prone, right? And it, and it literally took a couple of seconds. I think you're right. I probably could have set that up. Yeah, you really have to try to mess this up. Okay, so it's, prove it's to hard. me. So prove to me this is working. All right, we're gonna close this. 
and run I.O. against the host. Okay, so what we're seeing right here is this is a, a number, a host with a number of virtual machines that are running and yep. we're generating I.O. So basically everything is up and running. We can see under the high availability dashboard, we've got our green, uh, we've got our green um, uh, icon. So that means things are good. Things are great. Okay, cool. Now so what now are we going to do? We're going to break it. We're going to break it. Of course we are. <laughs> Why wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to go down here and open up the command line. Okay, this is super secret stuff right here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the old sim command line that we all know and love. Okay, no, not <laughs> so. all of us. Some of us, not all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're just going to offline the FA ports and okay. simulate a host side failure. Okay, so what you're going to do is basically, because we're not in Cambridge or Hopkinton, we want to simulate um, some of the ports becoming unavailable. So rather than you know physically pulling the ports, you're going to go ahead and you're going to issue some command to take things offline. Absolutely. But that's basically what you're simulating. Yes. Okay. And wait, so what happened here? It looks like, so you, the ports are offline and we got a notification, but it looks like a tweet. Yeah, it's a tweet notification. We've got it up on EMC code. Um, you can monitor your VMAX and have it tweet messages to you when there's a problem. Greg McCarthy's going to love that if he's paying attention. <laughs> okay, so so that's cool. So that And that's one of the things that we have the ability to do. So if, if people want to friend their VMAX systems or follow their VMAX systems, we actually have code available uh, through the open source community where they can go ahead and they can access that and they can very easily set something like that up. Absolutely. Very cool. This is not your grandfather's storage anymore. <laughs> no, not at all. All right, so we failed the port. Now... Now we're going to look at the front end okay. and see that there's no I.O. running in So Hopkins. I see a couple of zeros right there, so that's probably not ideal. And that on the is, other side, And this is the Cambridge side, so this is the one that we just, so you're actually now running the I.O. over on the other side. So what you did is you took the ports offline, but the application users, nobody is aware of this because everything just went ahead and ran on the secondary site. Absolutely, completely transparent to the host. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that if, if the big difference between SRDF Metro and the capability that it provides is that in the past, if that source side went down and you wanted to recover up against that target site, you had to go in and you had to actually do something, right? You had to take the R2s, you had to read, write, enable the R2s, you had to restart the host. So there was a recovery time associated with that type of a failure. But what you're showing here is that now something like that fails and the application just continues to run. So your RTO is, is basically basically non-existent, it's zero. It's, it's zero, it's a high availability cluster. Very, very cool, okay. Okay, what else do we have? So we're gonna minimize this. Okay. And go back and fix things. Okay, now we're gonna fix them. Okay, host so is host back online. Connected. Okay, so what else do we have? We're gonna break it again. We're gonna break it again, of course, why not? We got it back up online, so let's break it again. All right, so. So instead of killing the front end this time, yep. one of the common things that fails for us is the network link between the sites. Okay, so the line between Hopkinton and Cambridge in this example. Yeah, essentially we're creating a scenario that could result in a split okay. ring. So this is the proverbial backhoe ripping up the cable in the parking lot, the story that we always tell about, you know, link failures. Yeah, absolutely, or just some nut loose in the data center that's pulling cables and doesn't okay. realize. Yes, that happens as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Okay. So we're going to offline the FA ports now. Okay, or, sorry, so, the yep, RF ports. All right, ports so they're now. offline. We they're start offline. to eat. Okay. And now you're going to prove it to me. And now I'm going to prove it. Okay, and I see the the uh, high availability tab went from green to yellow, so we know something's not right. We've got and zero there. Okay. Zero there. So now we're going to check Cambridge again okay. and see that it's still running IO. So okay. the witness picked Cambridge. Look at that. Picked a winner. Yeah. Excellent. That's all very cool. So, okay, um, and now you're gonna bring everything back up online. We're back up online and that's it, that's the demo. Yeah, that's That is it. super awesome stuff. Well, thank you, Melissa, I learned a lot. Um, I'm really surprised about the simplicity that we were able to demonstrate here today. Thank you for uh, joining us. Matter of fact, I think you're coming back a little bit later this week. We've got another demo that you'll be helping us out with. So that should, be, uh, should, that should be a lot of fun. So thanks for everybody for, uh, for um, joining us here today. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a short break and then we'll be coming back with more EMC world goodness.